Welcome to the ARC MMA. In this video, you will learn how to prepare a sample for and collect data on our Agilent 6230 time of flight mass spectrometer system using electrospray ionization. In addition to proper sample preparation techniques, you will learn how to operate the instrument to do flow injection accurate mass analysis. This video will not cover strategies for liquid chromatography separations prior to mass spec analysis. First, I will show you how to prepare your sample for mass spec. However, we ask that you prepare your samples ahead of time in your own lab whenever possible. You will need LCMS compatible sample vials. Most standard two milliliter auto sampler vials will work with this system. When preparing your samples, make sure to use LCMS grade solvents. Methanol, acetonitrile, and water are the preferred and primary solvents used on this system. If your sample is not soluble in any of these solvents, you can dissolve your sample in a compatible solvent, for example, DCM, and then dilute into one of our preferred solvents, as long as they are miscible and your sample does not precipitate upon doing so. Mass spectrometers are sensitive instruments capable of detecting minute, heavily diluted quantities. A sample that is too concentrated or contaminated runs a risk of clogging tubing or causing excessive buildup and wear on the ion transfer capillary. Here are some important guidelines for sample prep. LCMS grade solvents only. Use two mil auto sampler vials. Final sample concentration should be between 10 and 100 micromolar. Your sample should not include salts unless they are volatile. Phosphate buffered samples must be purified. Siloxanes from laboratory vacuum grease ionize exceptionally well, so please minimize contamination of your sample because it may contaminate the instrument for quite some time after your sample run. For today's example, I am going to prepare a 50 micromolar sample of caffeine dissolved in methanol. I have prepared a one milligram per milliliter stock solution in methanol. Caffeine's molar mass is 194.194, but for today's example, we will use a molar mass of 200. A one milligram per mil stock solution is 5,000 micromolar, so we'll need to dilute this quite a bit. To dilute down to 50 micromolar, I'm going to take 10 microliters of my stock solution and dilute it with approximately one milliliter of methanol. Now I have a sample ready for analysis. Now that we are at the instrument, check to make sure the ESI source is installed on the TOF. If there is a different source, do not attempt to switch it yourself. Let's load our sample. First, press the button on the side of the auto sampler and remove the front sample tray. There is usually a methanol blank in spot A1 and some other facility specific samples in the A row. Let's mount our sample in spot B1. Return the tray to the auto sampler and close the door. This instrument has a binary pump, meaning that it can draw from two different solvent bottles simultaneously. If you need to change the eluent, locate the label on the tubing and on the cap to make sure you have the correct channel. Unscrew the cap and move the tubing and cap to the new eluent bottle. Cap the old eluent bottle with the other cap. For flow injections that bypass the LC column, you will only need one solvent, so pick whichever is most compatible with your sample. On channel A1, we typically have water, and on B1, we typically have acetonitrile or methanol. Often you may find solvent bottles with volatile additives such as formic acid or ammonium acetate added to aid in ionization. It is very important that you check the solvent bottles before you run your samples, as they change constantly. If you need a different bottle, you must use solvent from our dedicated LCMS solvent cabinet. These bottles are filtered specifically for LCMS. Do not top off these bottles or use any other bottles. If the solvent you need is unavailable, please let an ARC MMA staff member know via Teams. For this demonstration, we will run our caffeine sample with methanol as our eluent on the B1 channel. Next, we will check levels of the reference and tune mixes. Calibrant bottle A is the reference mix, and calibrant bottle B is the tune mix. If either of these vials are empty or low, make sure to top off with the correct mix, which you will find stored in the smaller standards fridge. Now we're ready to start using the instrument. In Agilent Mass Hunter data acquisition, the first thing we are going to do is load our method from the method editor tab at the bottom and make sure it is using the correct solvent bottle. There are many methods available on this instrument, but today we will be using MMA, FIA, pause, dual, ESI. 
In the binary pump tab, check that the solvent bottle you need is set to 100% for the duration of the method. 100% methanol on the B1 channel is what we will need for today. If you have made any changes to the method for your solvent, click apply and then save method. If you make any other changes to the method other than solvents, please save the method as your own. If you have swapped the actual solvent bottle out for a different solvent, now is a good time to prime the solvent channel by right-clicking on the appropriate bottle and selecting Prime On from the menu. This function takes a few minutes but will finish automatically. Next, we will run a check tune to make sure the instrument is operating at optimal sensitivity and is generating a predictable response across a range of masses. For the purpose of this example, we will be running a positive tune only. In the context menu, select Tune. In the Tune menu at the bottom, make sure Dual ESI is selected in the Ion Source drop-down menu. In the Tune and Calibration tab, inside the TOF box, make sure that Positive and Mass Calibration slash Check are selected. Click the green On button above to start the instrument. Below the ion source area, select Calibrant Bottle B to flow Tune Mix into the TOF. Once you see all of the Tune Mix peaks appear on the MS Profile, click Start TOF Mass Calibration. If the auto-tune completes successfully, it will bring up a PDF document of the tune report. You can exit out of this and switch the software context back to Acquisition. Click yes when it asks you to proceed to acquisition context. You may save the tune file if the tune was completed successfully. Now we are going to set up our auto sampler work list. The best way to do this is to start from either a recent work list or the available ESI FIA blank work list that includes the instrument standby script at the end of it. This script serves to automatically put the instrument on standby when your samples are done running. If you use an old work list or the blank work list, please save as a new work list before you make any changes to the old one. Today's work list will be called 2021 12 14 underscore MMA underscore ESI underscore training. Your work list should be saved in the work lists folder starting with the date in the YYY MMDD format. Now I will enter the sample name sample position, and the correct method. Next, specify your data directory and file name. It is good to keep track of your sample runs by specifying a run number each time. This prevents overwriting of experimental data by the software. The comment section is helpful to specify solvents, eluents, and additives for the record keeping and troubleshooting should your samples not ionize properly. To add more samples with the same parameters, select the row, right click, and select copy row. Then select the row below which you would like to insert the next sample and select insert copied row. You can do this for multiple rows at a time, but make sure that the standby script is always last. Once you are done making changes to your work list, save it. If you make any further changes, save it again. The software does not auto save work lists. Once you are ready, check the boxes of your samples and the script on the work list and hit the black play button to run the work list. As it is running, you can observe the progress by monitoring the tick and BPC. The tick is the total ion chromatogram, which is the sum of all of the ions in the mass spectrum. BPC is the base peak chromatogram, which is the intensity of the current most abundant ion in the mass spectrum. If you observe a peak on the tick or the BPC shortly after your sample run starts, then there is a good chance that your sample has ionized. Your data is automatically saved. If you want to rerun any samples, we suggest inserting a new row into your work list and incrementing the run number for your sample file name. 
When you are done with the instrument, please make sure it is on standby before you leave the lab and remember to take your samples with you. To learn how to analyze your data, please watch our video on data processing using MassHunter qualitative analysis software. Now you know how to prepare a sample for and operate the Agilent 6230 ESI TOF LCMS using flow injection analysis. Please be aware that you are not a fully trained user until you take an in-person proficiency test with an ARC MMA staff member. Thanks for watching and see you in lab soon.